Welcome to Beat Diabetes. I've been doing a little research into the idea of metabolic flexibility. I saw a video by Dr. Jason Fung who talked about that a bit. And then uh, I did some uh, just YouTube searches and I came across a, an interview with a guy by the name of Mike Nelson, Mike T. Nelson, who is interviewed by a couple of nutritionists and he himself is a nutritionist. So they were not doctors. They were nutritionists. Now, I, I have to admit, I'm always a little suspicious about nutritionists because so many of them hang on to the old, tired dogma of you just keep the fat low and eat lots of healthy carbs and you'll be fine. Uh, Mike doesn't quite fit into that category. So he talks about metabolic flexibility. Some of the things he said I liked. Some of the things he said I wasn't too crazy about. He says, you should be able to process carbohydrates quite well. One of the definitions of a diabetic is that they have a hard time processing and using carbohydrates. On the other hand of the spectrum, you should be able to use and process fat effectively also. Well, I mostly agree with that. You should be able to handle carbohydrates. I have never held to the concept that human beings are just not made to handle carbs. Uh, if that were true, <laughs> we'd, we'd all be in trouble because most of the world eats carbs, has eaten carbs from ever since recorded history. They've also eaten meat ever since recorded history until you get to beyond Noah's flood. So uh, he says we should be able to handle both. Uh, I agree. Here's another quote, metabolic flexibility is how well you can use carbohydrates on one end, on the other end of the spectrum, how well you can process fat, and then how well you can transition back and forth between the two. So being able to process a meal of mostly fat and then uh, the next day you eat a, a meal of mostly carbs, uh, you should be able to handle both. I would tend to agree with uh, maybe a caveat or two, but... I don't essentially have a problem with that. We should be able to handle both. A person ought to be able to eat some brown rice with their meal and everything would be fine. Now, if you're diabetic, you probably can't. And I don't take chances on rice anymore. I haven't in years. But in those early days, uh, rice was not a problem for me and it won't be a problem for most people. And if we would have probably eaten the way we should and stayed slim and stayed on the muscular side... We could probably go all our lives and eat some brown rice and an occasional sweet potato and not have a single problem. All right. Now, here's, he, here's something he says. He, he talks a lot about you need carbs when you're doing high-intensity work, high-intensity exercise, and when you're not, you can eat mostly fat. Uh, he says, when you're doing high-intensity exercise, you can eat carbs to provide the energy you need, and when you're not physically active, you can eat fat to achieve a better body composition. And he, I think he's talking about you'll stay slim and you'll stay more muscular and you'll just look better if you eat the fat when you're not exercising hard. So one of the things he emphasizes is the idea that if you're going to really work at it, I mean, you're going to do wind sprints or you're going to play a game of fast-paced basketball uh, or you're going to go out in the, in the ring and box or wrestle, then you better load up on the carbs. I'm not convinced at all by that, nor do I feel the research proves it, although some research seems to indicate that, some does not. Um, if, if you say, well, I don't think you can do intense exercise at all if you don't load up on carbs, you ought to read some of the things written by Dr. Tim Noakes, who was and uh, I was a long distance runner for years and years. I don't know if he's still doing it or not. He's probably about my age, uh, 70 something. So uh, I don't know if he's still doing it. But when he first got diabetes and figured out he had to lower his carbs significantly, he found he ran better on a low carb diet. He ran faster. He was less tired. He had more energy on a low carb diet than he ever did by carb loading. So it is by no means a given that if you're going to do something rather physically active, like run a marathon or play some basketball or whatever, you've got to have a big bowl of mac and cheese before you can do it or you just will fail and flop. But here's another point. Most people, most people that watch this channel, or to put it another way, most people that become a type 2 diabetic, 
that's going to happen when you're in your 50s. Now, it was starting to happen when you're in your 20s, probably, and just gradually got worse until the dam broke. And suddenly you've got an A1C of 8, 9, 10, whatever. But most people are usually in their 50s by the time the doctor says, you, sir, or you, ma'am, are a type 2 diabetic. And guess what? <laughs> you don't need to tell them you better eat your carbs before you do those wind sprints. If you say something like that to most people in their 50s, they'll say something like, uh, excuse me, I haven't done wind sprints since I was in high school. I haven't played fast-paced basketball since I was 18 years old. So the idea that if you're going to do really intense, super intense, professional level, world-class level exercise or games or sports, you better carb load. Number one, that's not even proven. Number two, most people with type 2 diabetics, that's the last of their worries. They're not out there running themselves like crazy. They're not doing 26-mile marathons or anything of the sort. So saying you better carb load before you do that sort of a thing is just silly for most type 2 diabetics. Most of them are overweight. They're kind of couch potato types, and uh, they're just not going to be out there doing it. Now, granted, there may be a few that are really into athletics and sports, and uh, they are doing it, but even then, I'm not at all sure they need to carb load. In fact, I'm about 90-some percent certain they don't. Uh, so he, I, what I like is he admits fat burning can be a good thing. At least he's not into the keep your fat as low as possible and keep your carbs nice and high and just eat only plant foods. He's not at all uh, to that level. And he says this, at rest, it's much more efficient for the body to use fat than it is for the body to use carbohydrates. We can get way more energy from fat than we can from the same amount of carbohydrates. Most of your day walking around, we should primarily be using fat as fuel. It's actually more efficient to do that. So he's not afraid of fat, and I give him kudos for that. Some people are just deathly afraid of fat at all. And to even say what he said would be considered, well, anathema. Uh, by many nutritionists. So here's a nutritionist that at least has enough sense to admit fat can be a good thing. He won't go the whole way and say, do the keto all the time, but at least he says it can be a good thing. And basically what he seems to be suggesting throughout the first half of this interview is that for normal daily activity where you're sitting at a computer and then you get up and you walk across the house to go somewhere or across the office and then you sit back and then you get up and maybe you go for a little light walk after lunch and then you get back and you're sitting at the computer, or you're reading a book, whatever. He's like, you don't need a lot of carbs for that. Fat can do just fine for that. I'd go further, but at least he admits that much. Okay, what's missing from his talk up to the point where I stopped listening is that he, he kind of makes a moral equivalence between fat and carbs, suggesting that whatever your diet, they all have some good and they all have some bad. And he, he strongly implies that one's about as good as the other. He says, in the fitness world, everyone is divided into their own little camp. You have the keto people, the carnivore people, the high carb people, whatever, and there's some truth to all of that. Well, when you say there's some truth to it all, then you're saying that the keto people are doing no better than the vegan people. They're doing no better than the vegetarian people. It's all about the same. Uh, no, folks, it's not all about the same. If you're a diabetic with a 12 A1C and you are desperate to get your A1C down, your fasting glucose down, and stop being a diabetic, it's not all the same. You can't just pick and choose blindly. Well, I wonder what I'll choose because it's all about the same. It's not all about the same. And then another quote from uh, Mike Nelson, every little diet program decides what food group am I going to demonize? There's some truth to all of it. Once again, some truth to all of it, which makes it confusing for the consumer. Uh, they're not equivalent. The diets are radically different and the outcomes are radically different. And if you're diabetic, type 2 diabetic, with an outrageously high A1C, you can't just pick and choose and just any old diet will work. Some diets will work beautifully and others will, you won't move at all or maybe you'll even move higher. 
And the idea that if I just cut my fat and eat a lot of whole grains, healthy whole grain foods and lots of fruits, then I'll fix myself is ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. The one thing that he said that I absolutely hate it. And again, some of the things he said I could agree with, and he's not all bad. He's not all wrong. He's not a, in Christian circles. Every time people hear a preacher that says something they thoroughly disagree with, they'll call him a false prophet. Well, he's not a food false prophet. He's reasonable in a lot of ways. But one thing he said I just absolutely don't like at all. He says, I grant that if you look at what the average American eats, it's probably a little bit too high in carbohydrates and they might be better off with more protein and you could play around with a little with different types of fat. That statement that the average American's diet is probably a little bit too high in carbohydrates, to me that's absurd. The average American's diet is way, way over the top too high in carbohydrates. When you think of all the bread products we eat and all the sugar we eat, I heard recently in Abraham Lincoln's day, the average American ate one pound of sugar per year. Today, the average American eats 250 pounds of sugar per year. To say our diet is probably a little bit high in carbohydrates, <laughs> well, to me, that's absurd. It's like seeing a man drowning in the ocean. He's about to go down for the last time, and he's surrounded by the ocean. He fell off a cruise ship. The ocean is everywhere. As far as you can see, there's ocean, ocean, nothing but ocean, and he's drowning in the ocean. And you say, well, you know what? He's probably struggling from a little bit too much water. <laughs> No, he's not. Pro there's no probably to it. It's too much water and it's not a little bit. It's an entire ocean. And that's what we're doing with our carbs. We've got an ocean of carbohydrates. We're in just gorging on day after day, meal after meal, snack after snack. We are not probably a little bit high in carbs. We are definitely way too high, fanatically high, obsessively high, incredibly high, amazingly high in carbs. Or to put it another way, you're in the woods and you see a man who's lying in the, on the ground with a spear in his chest and he's dead. And someone comes along and says, what happened to that guy? You say, well, I think he was uh, probably, I think he probably died of a bit too much spear. No, there's no probably. The man's dead from a spear. And it wasn't a little bit too much. It was way too much. So, you know, I, I, I want to ask, why did you put it that way, Mike? Why did you say we're probably eating a little bit too much carbs? There's no probably. Look around at the way people eat at the restaurant, in their homes. And it's not just America. It's Africa. It's India. It's everywhere. We're loading ourselves and gorging ourselves on sugar and sodas and sugary fruit juice and pastries of all kinds and donuts and bagels and just all this stuff that's either sugar as it goes into the mouth or it becomes sugar about five minutes after it gets into our stomach. And there's no probably about it. We are suffering, not from a little bit too many carbs, far too many carbs. And if that's the case, the solution is to significantly, and I mean significantly, reduce the carbohydrates. I would say most Americans that don't watch their diet are eating north of 200 grams of carbs per day, often above 300 grams of carbs per day. And we need to bring it way, way down until it's maybe 60, 50. If you've got an A1C that's outrageous and you're suffering from neuropathy and you're urinating all the time and having all the diabetic classic symptoms, you better go lower still. Now, do it a little bit gradually. I'm not suggesting you just do it cold turkey, but you're going to have to cut. So, to me, what we have here is a, is a man with some good ideas, 
and uh, he made some good statements, but he seemed a bit tentative. I think uh, he, he was a bit tentative to say our problem is just too many carbs, period. He suffers from moderation-itis, and a lot of nutritionists and many doctors have that same disease. Let me say it again, moderation-itis, moderate in all things. Well, I believe in being moderate in our personality, being gentle and kind and, and moderate and not too quick to lose our temper. But when it comes to your diet, if you're diabetic or even close to becoming diabetic, uh, diabetic lose your moderation, get radical, get severe, get savage, and cut those carbohydrates. Benedict and I do other things besides talk about overcoming diabetes. We have a Bible channel where we study the Bible together. This is probably not as somber a Bible study as you might be used to. We laugh and kid each other a bit, but we also go into the details of the scriptures and share insights from our many years of preaching and studying the Bible. Insights I believe will be helpful to you as you navigate your way through this difficult and dangerous world. Join us on Thursdays on the channel called By My Name, Dennis Pollock, and catch my short Bible Devos on Mondays on the same channel. Beating diabetes is great, but winning in the ultimate struggle of life is better still.